Hello, oh, I'm delighted to be joined today by Adam Goodger. He's founder and CEO of Real Life Tech. So Adam, thanks so much for being with us today. Um, for those people out there that don't know about Real Life Tech, perhaps you could just give us a short introduction to the company. Sure. Um, hi, Katie. It's, it's great to, to join you today. Uh, so Real Life Tech is a technology company that focuses on uh, the sports and entertainment sector, and in particular, how to utilize data and mobile in order to create firstly better and safer fan experiences and then secondly to uh, drive and increase revenue particularly within uh, ticket sales ancillary sales and sponsorship and that's us and we work with uh, i think now uh, latest count 55 of the world's biggest teams uh, venues and destinations including uh, Tottenham Hotspur, Southampton FC, Lords, uh, Edge Baston, Indianapolis Motor Speedway, the O2 AG, and many, many others. Apologies if uh, I haven't mentioned you. Perfect. And obviously, you sort of it, not too uh, recently, you did a, a boxing match at the SSE Arena. Wembley, which of course that was where we first met at ALSD International. Um, perhaps you could just tell us about the contactless ticketing piece um, and how that was, uh, you know, sort of uh, how that went, the results. Sure. Um, so, I, and, and saving the, 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 the best, uh, one of the best clients to last. So the uh, SSC Arena um, Wembley, um, now part of, of ASM Global, uh, but who we've worked with in previous guys with, with AEG for over three years. Uh, and what they wanted to do in, uh, in, the, in the Anthony Joshua boxing match in December was to illustrate that an event could go completely digital and that that could run smoothly, it could be profitable and uh, it could be safe. Uh, and so working alongside them, we uh, connected firstly their ticketing, uh, so access tickets as the primary ticketing uh, supplier, uh, and their app, which Real Life Tech produces, uh, and then crucially, all of their F&B operations. So utilizing, in this case, it was Good Till, although we, we work with, with many other POS providers. So if you were coming to that event, uh, you uh, had to have a digital ticket for entry, which you would then uh, access through the SSC Arena Wembley app. Uh, then you were directed to your seat uh, and uh, informed that you could, uh, all food and beverage purchasing would be done mobile only. So there was no cash uh, and no card and no going up to, to pay at the concession stand. Uh, so within the app, we then link the inventory from the POS and all, all of the pricing uh, and enabled people to order from their seats. And then a bit like you would see with Deliveroo or Uber Eats or one of those services where we would uh, estimate wait times and the, the bars could set the wait times themselves to control the throughput. And what would happen is the order would go through directly into the POS system that the people behind the bar would process the order, would say whether it's in progress or completed, uh, so that the person sitting in their seat get, is getting notifications to how their order is progressing, uh, and then would say, your order is ready in six minutes or five minutes or two minutes, and then would be notified when to come and collect. And so then uh, the customers would come up uh, and fulfill their order, touch their phone on the QR code um, at the concession stand, and go back to their seat. Um, and this is the first time that in a major event like that, that not only entry, but all ordering was done digitally and via mobile. Uh, and what was incredibly successful ab about it, um, first thing, I, I can't go into to details, but, um, but the, the revenue generation was much higher than expected. In fact, much higher, uh, significantly higher than, than the same events previously. But most importantly, the ability to be able to operationally control the throughput of orders, to keep that distance 
and to in essence remove queues across the whole venue uh, was an, in, uh, an astounding success, even from from our perspective. Uh, and this is something that we you know we we do day in day out. Um, so that's what was was incredibly excited, and not just from a safety perspective, but actual from an operational efficiency and a customer experience perspective, um, it works really well. Uh, and then how would you say, obviously touching on, you know, sort of COVID, which unfortunately is one of the topics we have to talk about at the minute, but, you know, how has the, the pandemic sort of accelerated your growth in terms of operations as, you know, we all sort of, I suppose, take a forward leap 10 years in terms of technology? Um, and then at the same token, you know, what are you seeing venues doing or wanting to do in terms of you know restoring faith um for indeed when did the venues reopen there in the uk hopefully um in june mm, yeah so um the the biggest acceleration factor that we've seen is is adoption is is the the prevalence and the desire for digital adoption amongst not only fans and, and customers but also from uh, venue owners, teams, and and operators. That there is this now two pronged desire where fans are looking for digital solutions that will reduce contact, and the obvious ones that need to be removed are paper tickets and cash. Uh, and if you can then remove queues alongside that and remove the lines within the venues, this is a, it's an expectation, and fans are now much more willing to actively seek out and adopt technology that is put in front of them and is also mandated for them. Um, and venues as well have been keen to grasp that these fundamentals need to be in place in reassuring fans, local authorities and government that it is safe. And the more uh, initiatives that the industry can take to drive this forward and shout about it, you know, this is a lot of the thing that I loved about um, this community in throughout the pandemic is it's it, the message was very much like this is what we're used to doing we are used to solving problems of people in large spaces you know give us the tools and we will show you how to do it and that's what um, you know we alongside our industry partners have been doing so that drive to adoption for both customers and venues uh, has been the biggest significant shift that we've seen uh, and what would you say are the opportunities for the venues themselves for actually going fully contactless? Uh, and what new revenue streams do you see in terms of the adoption of mobile ticketing? Yeah, um, and we've been working on this for a number of years. And as a data company, it's something that we that we significantly drill into. So I, I'll take the firstly, I'll take the opportunity cost first. You know, what is the cost of not doing this? The cost of not doing it and not adopting a fully digital approach is that, uh, that you are going against fan expectations and you are going against uh, what is going to be mandated by local authorities and governments. So it's that very existential threat of uh, you need to be doing something in this space and as much as possible. Um, so that's the cost of not doing it. What are then the upsides of doing it irrespective of COVID. Um, so what we've seen is that there is a significant increase in revenue. Uh, when people move to, to mobile ordering in particular and contactless, but mobile ordering in particular, the basket size is between 20 and 30% increased. Um, the best way I would encourage venues to look at this is look at fast food, who are innovators in the delivery of food and, and beverage. That major fast food outlets have moved from uh, having the transaction at the point of a, uh, of a till to moving the transaction to a device, whether that is a kiosk or whether that is a mobile phone. Um, they have done this because it is much more efficient to process that order, the basket sizes are higher and the operational costs are lower. You need less staff in order to take those orders. So moving to mobile ordering reduces costs, increases basket size, so people are buying more and more often, so you are getting more revenue. Um, so the pluses are, are huge. 
Uh, and again, for mobile ticketing, convenience, and also the all important uh, point of, uh, of digital data that starts the journey. If you have uh, digital ticketing that then goes into your own environment, whether that's app or web, you have access to the customer at that first point uh, and then can drive them through the rest of the digital journey. Uh, and then to, in terms of sports and entertainment venues, uh, what kinds of new features are you seeing them deploying um, so that they can reduce the number of key touch points throughout the venue? Yeah, so um, the move to mobile apps is uh, ha has been noticeable both on the consumer side um, and on the venue side. Uh, and from our side, what we are seeing is the connection of different systems and suppliers working together. Uh, so rather than having technology in silos, so your point of sale system doing one thing, your app and your web doing another, your email communications working separately, your ticketing, your access control, is the ability to build these systems together uh, to create a single experience. So the app knows when you're in the building, it surfaces your digital ticket through a link into your ticket provider that like we did, where you order and it goes directly into your POS system and isn't separate. So you have one set of accounting, one set of stock, one set of reconciliation and one system for people who are often temporary in terms of the operators that they can use uh, and not having to learn um, and, and train on new things. So that combination and looking at this holistically, uh, sharing information is some of the things that, that I'm seeing that maybe wasn't as prevalent prior to COVID. Okay, so obviously when it comes to actually communicating with fans, how are you seeing clubs and venues sort of evolving their communications uh, when it comes to the fan experience and fan engagement? Sure. So uh, there are two things that we see uh, are uh, changing in terms of communication approach. So the first is uh, that there's more over communication and lack of a, of a fear of, are we pushing too much information? That particularly in the short term, uh, fans need uh, in-depth information as to what's changing, where they need to go, uh, what time should they be there? Is it still safe? Is the event still on? What are the protocols that are in place? So um, that needs to really ensure there's constant communication is one. The second and aligned to that is being able to personalize that communication. So taking even very simple, uh, simple data points, as in what tickets someone has, and then being able to personalize and automate the communication that dictates if you have this ticket, uh, then you should be going to, to this entrance. And this is where you should be ordering from. Um, one of the things that, that we're looking at with, with Spurs is, um, is, is just showing people the concession points that are near them. Uh, and it, both from a convenience point of view, if you are in a particular place, you don't want to be showing things that are, you know, that, that are over the other side of the stadium. You want to be showing where um, where they can order that's very near to them and very convenient while still giving them choice. So that that personalization of communication is the second point. Uh, and then finally, Adam, sort of how are teams and venues managing the whole sort of social distancing density? Because obviously I know you know, in the UK, uh, when the venues first reopen in May, it'll be at a reduced um, amount. So, you know, sort of how can they ensure that fan confidence um, in returning? Um, you know, what, what, what can they do? Uh, the thing that we're seeing that, that, that is being effective, it, and it, it aligns to a couple of things I've talked about previously, is uh, clear communication. So being able to, uh, to ensure that the information that fans is receiving is regular and that is relevant and personal to, uh, to them uh, in particular. You know, they want to know uh, for them, where should they go? What should they be doing? Not just generalized information. Um, and then the, the second part is, uh, is that whole area of, of removing unnecessary contact and removing congestion. Uh, you know whether that's just very simple in terms of uh of being of monitoring where people are 
and having people who are going around and, and asking people just to uh, just to be aware of, of protocols and social distancing to removing things where you don't need to queue. So, you know, why should you queue for a drink to order one? Why should you? You know, we shouldn't have to do that anyway. And if we can use this to, uh, to both reassure fans uh, and to provide them with a better experience that ultimately means that they spend more and are happier, that's a win-win. So, uh, you know, that area of moving queues to a device uh, is one of the areas where we're seeing clients push a lot. So I think we can agree it's going to be a whole new normal uh, when we finally return to our stadia and arena in the near future. Uh, but thanks so much for your time today, Adam. That's great. We're looking forward to seeing you at ALSD International in Liverpool this September. Um, and thanks again. We'll see you soon. Great. Thank you very much, Katie.